I want to pour into this mold, which comes from Just For You Online UK. I am going to be using jet black paste, the precious gold floating pigment powder, and the gold shards, and they all come from Just For You Online UK. Let's move these out of my way. I've got some clear resin, the black, gold, and my shards. And what I like to do first is to use isopropanol alcohol at 99%, which I put in a spray bottle. And I quickly just spray the edges. And I find that this keeps a lot of the bubbles from forming on those edges. I'm going to pour some gold shards in first on the edges. Trying to control it a little bit. There we go. And now resin all over, clear resin. So now I'm going to heat it up, get rid of some of these bubbles. There we are. Okay, now this technique I saw from an artist called Minos Corner. M -E -E N A. L S corner and I haven't tried it before so I thought it'd be good fun to give it a go and tape it <laughs> I mean how stupid is that to give something a go for the first time and show everybody in the process so she's a fantastic artist and great friend of mine and I love her to bits I really recommend you following her on Instagram. So, Minol's Corner. She does amazing work. So, get rid of that little sprinkle of glitter. Let's give this a go. I want to try and control my pour as much as I can. And it's quite a fluid however you want it kind of design and all you're doing is sprinkling the top of your coasters with the colors that you've chosen in random lines And we'll see what happens. And now I want to go into a different direction with the gold. Start the flow. And when it's coming, I think I'm squeezing it. Uh, whoops. Too much. It's either too much or too little. Okay, a bit more black, and we're gonna go in this direction again. And this way.
Whoa, and that way. Tiny bit more of the gold in a different direction. There we are. And you can do it with as many colors as you want. Quick heat. Be careful with the edges of your mold. The more you heat, the more it'll spread, so be careful. And that's it. We'll wait and see how it cures. And then do a flood coat. Just tidying up the edges a little bit from all the drips. And we'll see how this has gone. It may have flopped completely and it may look nice. We'll see. Hello, we're back. These have cured for 24 hours. So let's have a look at them and do a flood coat. Whoops. Oh. That's the front. And that's the back. Pretty enough, I think. Some cool effects there. And there we go. So now I want to flood coat the top. And I could I could have left them in the mold, but because there's only a, a small amount of space between my pour and the edge of the mold, I prefer to flood coat them out of the mold. I find it's easier. It doesn't go over the edge of the mold and then give me a lot of cleanup afterwards. So I prefer to do it out of the mold and I like to prop them on containers that I keep. These are dessert, there's yogurt and I literally just pop them so they're off the table. I don't really want them to touch the table because I find then that if the resin runs over they will stick to the table and then go under the actual item itself and that becomes very messy to clean up. You can as well latex the underneath. It's entirely up to you what your preferred process is. When I have a lip like this, I don't tend to latex the underneath of the coaster. I only latex if I don't have this lip. If I've done a very full coaster and I don't have a lip, then I will latex. Whichever side, I don't want to flood coat. And the normal flood coat procedure. Take your time. I'd rather they didn't overflow. And that's it, the flood coat has been applied and now they will cure 24 hours.